I have been working on this video for a very long time and I am so excited to share it with you. And at the end of the video, there are some fun little bloopers and clips from my time with Tiffany and Ian last month that you'll definitely want to check out. Hey friends, welcome back to my sewing room. My name is Becca and in today's video we are going to demystify the friendship braid, specifically the ones that has little diamonds that go down the center of the braid. When I was working on this video, I made two different quilts featuring friendship braids. Obviously, the one that you see hanging up behind me, but also a different one that I put together for my mom. This one for my mom is essentially the same thing, except the braids are a little bit longer. There are only three of them. They have a small border around each one using that same accent fabric, and in between each of those braid strips is a narrow scrappy sashing using the leftover fabric from her jelly roll. You can put friendship braids together into any layout that you want. So what I wanted to focus on with this video is helping you understand the formula that's needed to assemble a friendship braid. And then once I walk you through that, I show you how to make this quilt hanging up behind me. I've got all of my materials laid out here and I'm really excited to get started. Most of the work is going to come in the prep with our jelly roll. So I'm going to set aside my yardage. I'm going to pull out the jelly roll and I want to talk to you about this for just a moment. When you're starting this project, you can absolutely just get started cutting and sewing if that's your jam. But if you want to make the fabric a little bit easier to work with and remove some of that stretch from the bias, then you might want to take just a little bit of time to starch each one of these strips before you cut them down. Now, if you decide just to jump right in cutting and sewing, that's totally fine. Just make sure that before you square things up later in the project, you apply a bit of starch because that's going to help you handle the bias edges that we're definitely going to be working with at some point during the project. For me, I am a lazy quilter. I like to get right to the good stuff. So I'm going to open this jelly roll up and I'm going to cut. What I'm going to do is from every single one of these strips, I need to cut six pieces of fabric that will measure two and a half inches by six and a half inches. And now because this is a jelly roll, these strips are already two and a half inches wide. I just need to line them up on my ruler and make sure that I get six pieces that measure six and a half inches. So I've already cut up a little bit of these strips, but I want to draw your attention to what I have here. I was able to get six of my pieces of fabric that measure two and a half inches by six and a half inches, but I also have a really good size piece of scrap that I could save for a future project. This would be a lot of fun to do maybe kind of a piano key border, or you could cut these down into a couple of two and a half inch by two and a half inch squares and put them somewhere else in the quilt or another project. Point is, if you have a fabric line that you have cut into that you just absolutely love, much like the one that I'm working with, you can still save this and do something beautiful with it later. To build out one of the braids, these are all the things that we need. And I'm going to show you how to make one. But before we do, I want to give you the formula that will allow you to make a braid in any size that you want. The first thing that you need to know is for your rectangular pieces, how wide was the fabric? Now remember, we used a jelly roll. So each one of these pieces of fabric, these rectangles, measure two and a half inches tall by six and a half inches wide. Once I know the measurements of my rectangle, everything else kind of falls into place. First, the width of the fabric, two and a half inches, dictates what size square I need. Because we used jelly roll strips that were two and a half inches wide, I need to make squares that are two and a half inches by two and a half inches. Our rectangulars are six and a half inches wide, and that means that my starting square has to be six and a half inches wide. It also means that my setting triangles are going to be formed from a six and a half inch square. So what I have here are 22 sets of my print fabric, and that means I have two pieces from every one of my strips, and they all measure two and a half inches by six and a half inches. I have 22 squares that are two and a half inches by two and a half inches. And then I cut two six and a half by six and a half inch squares. One of them I left in square shape. And then the other one I just cut on the diagonal so that I have two triangles. And this is what's going to be used to kind of square off that bottom point. 
the fabric will still have that point at the bottom, but it'll square it off, make it easier to sew into the quilt. So to get started, you're going to want to pick up one of your rectangles and one of your squares, and you're going to sew them together on this short side. Once I have my square sewn onto my rectangle, I'm going to press the seam underneath my print fabric. And since I'm working with batiks, I can just finger press that and it's going to be okay. But if you want to take the time to use an iron to do the pressing, that's fine too. Once I have this sewn together, then I can pick up my other piece and I'm going to come in with my rectangle and sew it to the side of my starting square, just like this using a quarter inch seam allowance. Once I have the rectangle sewn onto the starting square, I'm going to take my fingers and press the seam underneath the print fabric. Spoiler alert, anytime we're pressing, we're gonna press the seams underneath our print fabric. Then I'm gonna come in with the other piece that I made and I'm gonna put that white square, that accent square on top of my print square here. And because the seams are always pressed underneath the print fabric, they're going to nest up really nicely. If you have trouble holding this together, you can clip it or pin it. I'm just gonna hold it with my finger. Take this to the sewing machine and sew this with a quarter of an inch. Once I have that other rectangle sewn on, I'm going to press that underneath my print fabric too. And now we'll have something that kind of looks like this. We're gonna repeat all of those steps so that we're continuing to build this out. We're going to attach a square to one of our print fabrics. Press the seam underneath the print and then take the piece that doesn't have the square and line it up so that it's lined up with this edge and this edge. We're covering that entire accent square and we're going to have a little bit of the previous row showing hanging off to the side. So if it looks like this, you're doing it right. We're gonna sew along here with a quarter of an inch. Press this seam underneath our print fabric and come in with our next rectangle that has our accent square. Line that accent square up so it's covering that other rectangle and our seams are nested and sew all along here with a quarter of an inch. And then once that's sewn on, we'll press that underneath our print as well. We're always pressing the seams down. So you're going to keep building this out until you have 22 of these rows. You can do this completely scrappy if you'd like. I personally like to have the same fabric on either side of this accent square, but this is your project and you have total creative control to make this however you would like. So let's get to work building out our braids. You're going to make five of these, each with 22 pairs. So look at our braid. It's coming together. Isn't this just absolutely gorgeous? I cannot wait to see how this quilt turns out. I love this fabric line and I think it's going to be beautiful when it's all done. The next step is going to be to make this kind of a big rectangle so that we can start to sew it into our quilt top. But before we do that, we need to put some setting triangles on the last row to kind of square off the bottom. So to do that, what we're going to do is grab the two triangles that we got from that square that we cut in half, and we're going to line it up along the raw edge right here and sew this with a quarter of an inch. Now you can do this one of two ways. You can either eyeball center, which should be okay because we're going to square it up, but if you want to be absolutely perfect, you have to find center on this and this and then each of the triangles. And to find center, what you're going to do is pick up the edge of the fabric that you're going to sew on 
and fold it exactly in half and give this middle point a little crease with your fingers. And then you'll open it back up and it might be hard to see on camera, but there is a little indentation right there from where I creased it. Then we'll pick up one of the triangles and on that long edge, we're going to fold that directly in half and give that a little finger crease so that we have a little dent on our fabric, which you can kind of see on camera. And then all we're going to do is place these two fabrics right sides together and we're going to focus on making sure that those two dents are right on top of one another. Now if you want to be super, super careful, you can grab a pin and just pop it in there. And then you're going to take this to the sewing machine and sew right along here with a quarter of an inch. Once this side is sewn on, we're going to press this down just like we did with all of our rows. The seam goes underneath the setting triangle. And then we're going to turn this around and we're going to do this side. To find center, we're going to pick up this edge and fold it right up to that corner of the fabric. Give that a little press with our finger. Find center on our triangle match up those center spots and either hold it with your finger or pop a pin in there, whatever works for you. Then we're just going to push this over so that the seam is under that second setting triangle unit. And now it's going to be time to clean this up. But before we do, I need to let you know that when I cut along here, all of this edge and this edge is going to be a bias edge, which means it's super, super stretchy. So we need to be very careful with what we're going to do. Before I move on to that cleanup stage, I'm going to take this over to my ironing board. I'm going to give it a really good press with a generous amount of best press. Now, best press is going to stabilize this a little bit. It's not going to remove the stretchiness, but it will reduce it a little bit, which will help get us better results. So let's go best press this right now. Hey, Tiff, you're pressing. Mm -hmm. Here, do this. Lots of starch, please. <gasps> Would you believe I got through this entire video tutorial? I even had it posted and available online for a short period of time. And then I realized I forgot to show you how to turn your braid from something that looked like this into something that looked like this. And I'm sure several of you could probably figure it out, but this is an important part of the tutorial. So let me fix that for you. We're going to start off by taking a measurement of our braid. I have it laid out in front of me. I've already starched it. It's got a little bit of body to it. I need to know how wide this braid is. So I'm going to take my ruler. I'm going to lay it down so that this raw edge is lined up with these inner valleys or points here. And then I'm going to look for those same points on the opposite side and take a gander at how wide this really is. Now I'm going to round down to the nearest half inch because I'm going to have to take that measurement and divide it in half for the next step. Right now, mine is measuring at six and three quarters of an inch. And I don't want half of that because Anytime you have to take half of three quarters of an inch, it's not that you can't do the math easily, it's that you can't easily find the spot on the ruler. So I like to just round down to the nearest half inch. If fractions aren't your thing and you want to go with whole numbers, you can do that too. Just know that your braid is going to be a little bit narrower than it might have been had you worked with that half inch mark. So I'm going to go with six and a half inches instead of six and three quarters. Now I know what my width measurement is. It's time to do some cleaning up. I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to find two points that I can use to reference to start tidying up, if you will. The first one is the 45 degree line on my ruler. I'm going to set that on top of one of the seams for the braids. And the second one is that half measurement. So if I had six and a half, half of that is three and a quarter. And so we're going to take our ruler we're going to find that three and a quarter inch mark and we're going to just slide it down so that it is going through the center of all of those diamonds while also keeping that 45 degree line 
on top of that seam. This 45 degree line is going to help make sure that you are keeping your braid straight up and down. And let me show you what I mean by that. This is a braid that I trimmed up that was a little crooked. If you'll notice in this corner, those two fabrics come right up to the corner just perfectly, just like a half square triangle would. But on this side, do you see how it doesn't go all the way up to the corner? It's a little hard to see because this is a low volume print against a white, but I promise you, it's not going all the way up to the corner. I have some excess white up here. While that's not really a big deal, and it would certainly be fine in a quilt, I know that that braid's not straight and it could be a whole issue. So if you take that 45 degree line, lay it on one of those seams, that's going to help make sure that your first cut is nice and straight and it's keep your braid where it needs to be. Once I have my two reference points lined up where they need to be, measure twice, cut once, that's what they say, I'm going to take my rotary cutter and I'm going to clean up one edge. And if my ruler is not long enough to go through the entire thing, I will stop just shy of the ruler, I'll lift my ruler up and reposition it and make sure that I'm lining up this edge of the ruler with that raw edge that I just cleaned up. I guess that cleaned up edge is what you would call it. The three and a quarter inch mark, my halfway point is still going down the diamonds. And if I can see the 45 degree line and it happens to be laying on top of one of those seams, that would be great. Though I will tell you at this point, what is really probably more important is keeping this flush with the three and a quarter inch. We'll slide through there. Once I have one edge cleaned up, I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. The next cut that I'm going to take is going to be to clean up my starting square. And so I'm looking to make sure that my fabric is lined up down here and I am going through the starting and ending points right here. Like I, I want, I want to cut straight on the diagonal, just like I would have when I cut my setting triangles from that square. Then I'll rotate again. And now I've got three reference points that I can use. The first one I'm going to use is the six and a half inch mark because that's how wide I knew I was going to square up to. The second one is going to be the three and a quarter because that's my halfway point. Those should be going down through the center of my diamonds. And the third is the 45 degree line. This should be running parallel or on top of those braid seams as I'm going. And if those three areas match up, then I'll clean up this side. And I'll rotate this. And the final cut will be to line up on the bottom here and put my ruler a quarter inch away from that bottom point. And that is how you clean up your friendship braid. Let's get back to the tutorial. I am sure none of you out there has ever made a mistake in your quilt. I'm pretty sure I'm the only one, right? Well, I made a boo-boo and you probably can't tell just from looking at this because it looks like it's put together nicely. The problem is not with the piecing. The problem is with the fabric that I pulled. In the notes that I made for myself, I wanted the starting triangle and the setting triangles to be my background fabric, which is different than the square diamonds I have going down the braid. I felt like I wanted the braid to look like it was floating against the background. And I feel like if I keep this and these the same as the squares that are going through the braid, it's going to kind of be lost a little bit. So I have to do some cleanup. First, I need to replace my starting square with a square of my background. And then on the other end of the braid, I need to replace those setting triangles with a triangle from my background as well. And so what that's going to do is really frame out my braid, allow it to have that beautiful braid shape. It'll look like it's floating in the background, but it is going to mean I'm going to have to pull out Jack to make some changes. But don't worry if you haven't started this yet. The pattern that I have in the description box down below for you has already accounted for this boo-boo. I just wasn't paying close enough attention to the design that I had before I started working and recording the tutorial. The pattern that is available for you already accounts for the setting triangles and the starting square to be from your background fabric, not your accent fabric. 
So you should be good. However, if you made the same mistake that I did and you started working through your braid and you used your accent fabric to start and finish your braid, you can leave it the way it is. It'll still be a beautiful quilt. It'll just be your creative mark on your own project for how it goes together. You don't have to rip everything out and replace it with the right fabric. You could leave it as is and it'll be still very functional and very beautiful. As I was repairing this piece, I realized this is a great learning opportunity. If you started with the wrong starting square and you want to replace it, it's really easy to do. You're going to rip out the seams that were holding that square in, but on one of those edges, it's going to be the first piece that you sewed. You'll be able to figure it out from how the seams are laid on. It's the it's the two, right? It's the one that has the white square next to it and the other one. You're going to rip just about a half inch or so beyond. And then you're going to take your iron and press those seams so that they're no longer folded over because we're going to re-sew along that raw edge. And it's just easier if we can have it not folded under when we do that. Then you're going to grab your starting square. And this is what I think is called either a Y seam or a partial seam. Either way works. I'm going to take the first piece that did not have the white little square on it. I'm going to take my square of my background fabric and I'm going to line it up along that raw edge. And I'm going to make sure that it is lined up with this corner. I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew right along here. Then I'm going to fold it over, in this case, just because I'm replacing fabric and I don't care about the rest of the braid, I'm just going to have the seam go under the starting square. I know when we started, we had them all going down. It's not going to matter in the construction of the quilt. This is just easier for this step. I'm going to press that in place so it's nice and crisp and laying flat. And then this other side. We're going to kind of finagle it so that we can see that partial seam and we can get those raw edges lined up. And what I want to pay attention to is the intersection where this white square is and my starting square. I want to feel it with my fingers and make sure that those seams are kind of laying right on top of each other. If you do take the time to press this seam down instead of up under the starting square, that should nest really nicely because I didn't do that. I'm just looking to make sure that they are literally on top of one another. And then I can pop a pin in it or a couple of clips and take this to the sewing machine. And I'm going to start stitching about an inch before that seam was ripped so that this stays nice and intact. And I'm going to go all the way down. Once that's sewn into place, we can give this a nice press. And then we'll put it on our cutting mat and we're going to clean it up just like we did before. So now the secret's out of the bag. I am not a perfect quilter. I definitely make mistakes and you even got to see me fix it. Let's get back to the tutorial. Now that we have all of our braids trimmed up and ready to go, we need to measure them to see how long they are. Each of mine measure eight and a half inches wide by 67 inches long, except for one that measured, oh, 69 inches long. And that's because I pieced one braid on one machine and Tiffany pieced four of them on another one with a different foot. And so our quarter inches were off a little bit, but we figured this might be something that happens to you. If you have a braid that is longer than the others, what you're going to want to do to make sure everything lays nice and even is find the shortest length braid. In our case, it was four of the ones that Tiffany did. Mine was the longest. Hers measured 67 inches exactly. And so we accommodated for that by taking my braid, which was the longest, and just cutting a little extra off of the top. You can see the starting triangle looks different on Tiffany's braid than my braid. But honestly, 
you still have the overall braid effect. So I think we're going to be okay. Now, there are other ways that you could totally compensate for that. If you really want this really sharp point up here of your strip fabric with that starting square, I could have just added some of my background fabric to the top of the shorter braids. We chose to trim down instead of grow out, but you do what works best for you. The important thing is that all five of your braids are the exact same length. Once you know what that length is, then it's time to get our sashing fabric. This is our vertical sashing. For your vertical sashing fabric, you're going to need to cut six strips that measure four and a half inches by your width of fabric. And then you're going to piece them together to make four strips that are four and a half inches wide by whatever length your vertical braids are going to be. Mine are 67 inches, so I need four vertical sashing strips that are four and a half inches by 67 inches. When we were playing with the design of this quilt, by the way, we did come up with an alternate layout that I thought was really cool. We did this on my mom's quilt. I'll pop up a picture right here so you can see it. I loved this idea, but I'm not doing it with this quilt because I have gifted my scraps to Tiffany and I don't think I actually had enough scraps to do this. But if you do, this is a really cool alternate layout. In between those vertical sashing strips, we did a scrappy narrow sashing. So we took the scraps that were left over from our two and a half inch pieces and we just sewed them along that two and a half inch edge and made that really long, narrow, scrappy piece. Now the vertical sashings that we did to accommodate for that were only two and a half inches instead of four and a half inches. We did type up all of those instructions as an alternate layout in the pattern in case you wanna do that. I thought that looked really cool, but I'm sharing my scraps with Tiffany, so we're not gonna do that in this one. Before we assemble our vertical sashing to this, we want to stabilize the edges just a little bit. This isn't going to get rid of all of the stretch, but it is going to kind of help keep things from being a little wonky. So we're going to do what I call a victory lap. We're going to stay stitch around the entire edge of this row at about an eighth of an inch just inside. All that's going to do is help keep the fabric from stretching because this entire side on either side and even here and the other side, all four sides of this are bias edges, which means they're going to be stretchy. And it's gonna give you a lot of fullness in your quilt if you don't treat these with extra care. So I'm gonna do a really quick victory lap around each of my braids. The nice thing about these victory laps, by the way, in case you didn't know, these are great to do around the perimeter of a finished quilt top because it helps keep any seams that are in the outer edge of your quilt together. And it also helps to reduce fraying. So if you're sending a quilt out to a long armor, I'm gonna tell you right now, they probably love the idea of you doing a victory lap around your entire quilt top before you send it to them. Isn't that right, Tiffany? Yeah, for sure. I've got a victory lap sewn around one of my braids and I wanna show you what I was talking about. When I pick this one up and I give it a tug on the side, you can see it doesn't really stretch very much, but, and I'm gonna be very careful here because I don't wanna add a lot of fullness to my quilt or damage my braid. If I take this piece, do you see how that stretches? It's ever so slightly on camera because I'm not giving it a big tug, but it doesn't take much for that to stretch. That victory lap helped kind of keep the fabric in place and it's not like I'm giving that a good tug and it's not stretching. That's why I'm saying do your victory lap around all of your braids. It does take a little bit more time, but it's going to help you get better results. Now that I've got my victory lap sewn on here, I'm going to sew my vertical sashings in. And to do that, I'm gonna wanna pin because my sashing is exactly the same length or should be as my braid. So I'm gonna start by pinning one end of the sashing to one end of my braid. And by pin, I really mean clip because pins poke you and ain't nobody got time to bleed on their quilt. And then I'm gonna take the other short end and go to the opposite side of the braid. And I'm gonna clip that here, just like this. And then I like to fold it in half 
so that those two clipped edges are meeting each other. And I'm going to find the center and I'm going to clip the middle piece. And then, dun da da da, just shake all this out so it's easier to work with. Once I clip this middle piece right into the middle, I should have a sashing and a braid that are laying flat when I lay them out. They should be nice and flat. There should be no bumps. If there are any bumps or gaps in one or the other piece, you just want to work that in very gently. I would smooth it out and try to distribute any gaps that you have, and then just go along this edge and line up your raw edges and clip it into place, making sure to evenly distribute any of your gaps or twists or folds that you might have. Make sure that you're doing right side to right side, because look what I just did. There's my seam. I have wrong side of this to the right side of this, so I want to flip that around. All right, we've got a few clips in. That's enough to hold it in place. Let's take this to the sewing machine and get it stitched. This is, by the way, going to be stitched at a quarter of an inch, just like we normally would do. Once that's sewn on, you're going to press the seam underneath your vertical sashing, and you're going to repeat that on all of your braids so that you have these sashing rows in between each of your braids. <laughs> The center of our quilt is all finished and it measures 56 inches by 67 inches for me anyway. It's time to add our borders. So I'm going to start with an inner border of my background fabric and I'm going to cut my inner border at one and a half inches by with the fabric and I'm going to piece that around all four sides. Let me show you how I do that. Did you know that there are two ways to make your borders for your quilts? Well, there are. There's the way that I think is probably the quilt police method, and then there's the lazy quilter way. I'll let you guess which one I do. The quilt police method is that you measure the length and the width of your quilt, and you cut your border fabric and piece it exactly to that size. Now, if you're doing a pieced border, you absolutely need to do that. But if your border fabric is just solid yardage like I have here and it's not pieced, then you don't need to do that. What I like to do when I have just yardage for my border is I grab some width of fabric strips that are cut to the size that I need for my border and then I sew them together along the short edge. Once you have the strip sewn together, you're just going to press the seam to one side. You can press it open if you'd like. If you press it open, you'll have a little less bulk, but honestly, that's going to be perfectly fine. Then I just grab my quilt top. Since I know when I pieced this that I made the strip longer than the side of the quilt that I am attaching it to, I don't worry about trying to pin it. I just start it with a little bit of an overhang right here. And I'll sew this all the way down at a quarter of an inch. I'm going to do one side. It doesn't matter whether it's the top, the bottom, the left, or the right. I'm just going to pick a side to do that with. And then whatever side I choose, I'm going to do the opposite side on the next go round. So right now I'm actually sewing this onto the right side of the quilt. And then after I'm done with this, I will do the left side. Then I'll do the top and the bottom. Now, I will tell you, in order for this method to work, you have to be very delicate with your fabric. So this process might not work for you if you're a little heavy handed with feeding your fabric into your machine. You have to be very, very gentle. So a couple of tips that I use to make this successful. I like to get my quilt top up off of the floor. I don't want it to drag at all. So having a surface where you can set the bulk of your project up is a good idea. Make sure it's not hanging over the edge of your sewing cabinet. And then as I'm stitching, all I'm doing is holding on to the fabric that is in front of the needle. You can see my hands are kind of positioned down here. I'm just focusing on making sure that the fabric is feeding into the front of the presser foot straight. I'm not worrying about what's happening up here or what's happening over here. Once it's in this area, it's done. There, there's nothing I'm going to be able to do to adjust it. So I'm just focusing down here. My whole goal is just to make sure that this is staying straight. 
You're looking before the presser foot, not at the presser foot. I'm going to sew a little bit. I will stop. I will adjust my fabric, making sure that my raw edges are lined up. Now I do have my border fabric on top of my quilt top. You can do whatever works for you. I just find that this is a little bit easier for me because then I can make sure that I'm not tugging or pulling on the quilt at all. Once I have that border sewn on, I'm going to take this over to my ironing board and I'm going to press it so that the seam is going underneath the border. And after that is pressed, then I'm going to trim off the excess at the top and at the bottom. And the way I do that, I'll just show you really quick. So I get a ruler. And I line up the ruler with this straight raw edge on the bottom of my quilt. And then once I'm sure that it's all lined up and this is nice and flat, I'll take a rotary cutter and just cut through that. And now this is an extra little strip that I can add to another piece that I have cut for my inner borders. And I can rinse, lather, repeat this for the inner border and the outer border. Remember for the inner border, we're gonna use one and a half inch strips and for the outer border, we're gonna use four and a half inch strips. Once the borders are sewn onto the quilt, it measures 66 inches by 78 inches. I don't love the background, but I really love the borders and the prints. Now I just gotta get this thing quilted. Huh. Oh no, what are you doing? Well, it's almost time for my flight. I gotta get on the plane and go home. Oh, man. Wait, I got one more job for you. Here, quilt this. Seriously? Seriously. All right. The quilt is absolutely beautifully quilted. Tiffany did a phenomenal job, and she actually did that on a live stream from here while she was visiting in February. I'll link to her live stream in the description box down below in case you want to check that out. She walked you through what she did, how she did it, all of those fun things. Thank you, friends, so much for tuning into this video, and stay tuned for the fun clips that we've accumulated to share with you. I'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye! Tiffany! Press this. That. Okay, let's try it again. All of the fabric requirements will be in the description box down below. I'm going to use, listen, the th thing is trying to take my jelly roll. I'm going to use this Dust and Tom and <laughs> from Maywood Studios. This is by our very own Monique. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Apparently I'm just going to, nope, I have no fabric left. Tiffany's helping me with the quilt. You see her working over there? Mm -hmm. Why aren't you helping? Because I'm not crazy like y'all. <laughs> takes a minute, you know. I'm not that fast. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why aren't you helping? Not my quilt. <laughs> if you ever wanted to know what it's like to try to record a tutorial when you have guests in your sewing room, this is what I'm dealing with.